So what do you find most challenging about bringing a script to life and that process? I find the collaborative aspect of it when you're writing on assignment, especially if you're writing with, for a big brand like Sonic or other brands that I've worked with have been Pink Panther, Postman Pat, Yokai Watch, a variety of others. It's the collaboration because most of the writing that I've ever done, I have not been credited for. It's usually mm -hmm. because there are other people, higher profile writers who have been hired at some point, maybe preceding me. And I come in as a development executive and also as an advocate for the brand and have to bridge that gap between what the brand needs and wants and what the artiste, the auteur who was originally hired for the project wanted. And then mm. often the higher the stakes are with, with the project, the more of a Hunger Games like atmosphere ensues behind the scenes. So probably the worst and most cutthroat experience I ever had was working on a movie for and with Paul McCartney, because when Paul McCartney shows up at your office, all logic goes out the window. Like people cannot see be beyond the Beatles. And people will do just about anything to say that they're working with Paul McCartney. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that particular experience was a disaster and it was so unpleasant. I wasn't the screenwriter. I was the director of development at the company at that time. I didn't get the respect or authority that a high priced screenwriter or a producer or what have you would get, but I was trying to be the steward who, to play, make everybody play nice and to serve the needs of what the distributor would want, what our, the company that I worked for that was financing would want, what Paul McCartney's company would want. And then, then there were a lot of cooks in that kitchen and it just got crazy. So collaboration can be beautiful and terrible at the same time. Wow. That is kind of challenging. How much does it play into that you're female or does it? Well, that stage? No, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure because up until, up until 2017, when me too happened, I always thought it was a Marlene problem. Like I always, anything that would happen, I would just be like, I am defective. Like I'm just not cut out for this. I'm not, you know, and so then when me too happened and all these people came forward and I haven't quite had the same experience, like no one's ever assaulted me, but I have had other unpleasant experiences here and there. Then it made me reevaluate things that had happened in my career. And I thought, oh, well, I guess it's possible that those weren't a Marlene problem. Maybe it was because I was a female, I am a female and I'm Marlene, but actually for me, it was weirdly comforting the whole Me Too movement because I had a lot of shame and guilt for things that I felt were failures on my yeah. part. And then I reframed them and not necessarily in an official way, like with a therapist or anything, but just in my mind, I thought, well, Maybe I could cut myself a break and maybe it wasn't all my fault, you know, all the things that have happened. 